That's, that's how I feel, sort of like screaming inside. <laughs> morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee Moaning. If this is your first time here, is this going on podcast? It will be. <laughs> if this is your first time here, welcome. You can also listen to us on podcast. Harken. And if you're listening on podcast, you could go to our YouTube channel, The Sawala Adelies, and look at our beautiful faces. <laughs> uh, no one is suggesting that over here. She looks gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. She shaved her legs. I shaved my legs this morning. The yeah. sun is out. Yeah. And I exfoliated because I'm going to put on some fake tan. It means you're smooth like butter. Thank you. Um, so we are going to be talking about Philip Schofield's statement. Oh, no. In a bit, <laughs> which I find, personally, I find very, very Whoa. interesting. And we are going to drill into that statement because we think there's a lot more going on behind that statement. We're drilling and, for oil. Uh, we want to talk about Ed Balls's um, conversation around duty of care in TV, which Mark and I have spoken about for years. There mm. needs to be more of it. And then we've got a bit of silliness. But first of all, thank you all of you who watched us um, live, beamed live from Glasgow. Well <laughs> done, know? well done. So for those of you that know my sister Dina, I and Mark, we all do a show every morning, Saturday morning on our YouTube channel called The Curly Cuts of Croydon. And as you know, it is quite often chaos, but at the end of it, we always get fabulous food. So my sister Dina is an art teacher and not a TV presenter and not a TV chef. We were getting a bit nervous, flew to Glasgow. We were thinking of all the things that could possibly go wrong. Well, yeah. loads of things went wrong, but the one thing that we hadn't bargained for at all... As you stepped onto stage. ...was you have a very tight time of half an hour. You can't go over because the other chef will then be late. So we get out there, we've got a pan of oil, deep pan of oil that needs to be heated up because Dina's frying aubergines, I'm cooking chicken. And could we get the fucking hob to work? I'm sorry. Anyone that has an induction hob, uh, how do you do it? So it went on and it went on and it went on and we were about 12 minutes into our half hour and the oil wasn't hot. And I was literally, I don't, I'll have to watch it back. I never watch myself back ever on anything, but I have no idea what I was saying because I just kept talking because in my head I was going and, and every seat was taken and then it was three deep. Well, no, with, with, with each one it was getting deeper and deeper. And it's good. been beamed live on YouTube. It's right across the, the Ideal Home Show. And I'm thinking this is our first Hi, gig. Angel. And we are going to have to serve a platter of raw chicken and raw aubergine. Well, can, I know you kept saying serve, but the, the great detail here is that no one had to eat anything. Oh, we have to have a finished dish. No, 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 no. I know you have to have a finished dish, but serve I mean, at the end of the, the day, yeah, but if it was a raw. little bit cool. It, but know. anyway, it is up on the channel if you want to watch it. Jesus. We did two more. In the members shows, area. And they went to the members area. But the first one more is... Is is um is up so you can watch it if you missed it. Uh, if you like to see somebody really really suffering, then that's what you're going to see. And Dina was like, mm. I'm not, I didn't even know what Dina was saying. I could just I was just aware that there was a lot of. <laughs> mm. But no, to all I... the subs that came up, yeah, and all the members that came up to us, it was so lovely to see you afterwards. We were on the plane, weren't we? Walking to the airport actually, and Mark and I were saying. That and this is not being schmaltzy. This was a genuine conversation we were having. We, was we were saying, it's almost like this secret members club, mm. isn't it? People mm. were coming up. There was lots of people queuing that didn't know about the channel and didn't know about all the stuff that we all do together. And they were like having photographs and selfies and stuff. But then every few, mm. it was subs, and they were like, I'm a sub. And we were like, oh, and we had an extra cuddle. And it was like a family, it's like a secret family. But I, I also said after that, I said there's something very different as well. There's something very meaningful about the connection. So it was like, it was like meeting old friends, even though it was like physically the first time we'd met you, though obviously not the first time you'd met us necessarily. But there was that sort of proximity and a sort of, you know when you say to someone, when you meet them briefly, you go, I just get you. Mm. There was a kind of, I just get you. And that wasn't because Teresa bought me a Nutella cake. And that wasn't because Tommy suggested that I have an iron brew with a, with a vanilla float. You were so lovely. Which, I had an iron brew and 
I had a Nutella cake. Yeah, but... we're going to make an we're going to make an iron uh, float, Tommy, make because I'm going to Sorry, that's fine. Now. But it was it was lovely. A couple of other things I just want to say. Tommy so just said, could you have not had a run through? You're not allowed. You no. get there because there's another chef on there. Well, no, no. And backstage was like a tent, but we vlogged all that. You'll see all the backstage stuff on a vlog. But they did. Do, you can do, as many run throughs. They would do run throughs here, and it was really strange because there'd be moments where they would be. I'd be in there editing or writing, and then I'd I'd overhear and go, and there's Mark on the camera. He's with you know doing it for the YouTube. And I'd be like. I'm not in there. So you can do you can do verbal cooking run throughs, but, but you, you can't get do a, I'm got you can't a knife, do a I'm got a chopping run through. board. That's but why you, everyone needs a steward. The baking soda wasn't there. The this, the that. It was like. Oh, but can I just say, just briefly, off the off, just just as an observer, literally, because we were filming it. Congratulations to you. I thought you your your per, hang on hang on. I'm getting there. Your personal stories, your anecdotes, your all your just. Fizzy charm, that was all lovely. Oh, thank Dina you. Dina was absolutely excellent because, of course, the, for me, the most difficult moments ever in those situations are when, for whatever reasons, things are going wrong and there's a little bit of what I call dead air time. Whereas normally on the channel, I didn't have a microphone. I'd start gassing with you and sort of winding Dina up. So me and Dina were a little bit stymied because we wanted to be really rude, but there were kids in the audience and you just can't do the same thing that we do on the channel I mean, in I mean, a live Scotland situation. people don't swear as well. Well, they don't. Well, I don't know about that. I but, said tits but, up and it didn't go down yeah, well. But also, you haven't got as much time, and actually, people are there to get the food done. So, whilst you know, I, believe me, I had my fist in my mouth a million times, wanting to gag. No, at not gag point, sick, like at, crack a gag. At so one point, gag, I did gag. say to the audience, I've, I've really controlled. My, I walked him all the way here like a toddler, saying, yeah. "You're not saying this, and you're not saying that." So, do you want him to be more risque in the next show? And everyone was like, yes. "Yes." So, put it this way: in Sunderland, it's going to get even worse. Yeah, we are going to Sunderland as well. God knows what's going to happen there. Anyway, no, it was. Yeah, anyway, you were both excellent. The food was sensational. I've never seen a situation where, when you finished your demonstration, the crowds beat just <laughs> ran up to the to the to the stage. You were state. What's it called when you're stage correct? Stage. What's it called when people rush a stage? Rush the stage. What's it called? Rush the stage. You're stage rushed. Somebody there said, I don't know what was wrong with the induction heater because mine heats up so fast. The thing is, apparently, if the frying pan's too big, it touches the signal bit and it locked it. It locked it shut. Of all the nightmares you would have before going on stage, that was not one of my nightmares because I didn't even know it was a thing. I think one of my absolute highlights was at a moment where you needed something, I turned round on set and clutched at the, at the handles of an imaginary cupboard. God, yeah, because it was all just a set, because I, I went, I need a spoon. So I turned round to the kitchen behind <laughs> us and it was obviously, it was, it was two dimensional. It wasn't a kitchen. It was wallpaper to look like. I'm yeah. Clutching so you tried yeah. to open a wallpaper Very cupboard. Funny. Stage invasion. Stage invasion. Thanks, it, Sadie. Thank oh, someone just said that Dermot did have to did did mention the topic today on this morning. That's interesting. Oh, what okay. did he say? Yeah, what did he say? Oh, you see, I thought nothing was going to be mentioned. Right. I yes. was assumed yeah. that they were. Well, I thought, not. but if you say nothing, presumably that's in itself a bit weird, isn't it? Um, okay. So. Do you have? Um, Mr. Schofield statement to read I out. I do have Mr. So I don't know if anyone's seen, but in impeccable timing, he must have been missing being on set, I think. Uh, I think half an hour before this morning went live, Philip Schofield broke his silence and posted on his IG stories, on his IG stories, this message. Tell us what you think. Now I no longer work, work on this morning, this morning copied in. I am free to say this. I have free. He's free to say this, because of course he was constrained prior to this. I hope you have noticed that it's the same handful of people with a grudge against me, or the show, who seem to have the loudest voice. This morning is the best show to work on, with the best people. In all the years I worked there, there was no toxicity. You can listen to those persistently loud voices if you like, but the thousands of guests over the years, thousands of staff and crew, hundreds of presenters and contributors all know it is a family of wonderful, talented, kind, hard-working people. Discuss. You know, the, the line that sticks out for me the most here is, there was no toxicity. Well, there is not a single organisation, a single show, a single... Office. ...corner shop, a single office, nothing where there is zero toxicity. And I would say that if a person 
has lied and lied and lied and lied to his to his colleagues, to everybody that he works with. I think that that's quite toxic. Wow. Would you? Ah. That feels toxic. I think to suggest there's no toxicity anyway is absolutely it's insane. Bonkers. It's ludicrous. It's I mean, there's toxicity. So you're talking about perfection. Well, then. there's toxicity when we make the No Name Sunday show. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so Come on, there's toxicity. There's a lot. Absolutely. To Toffee has toxicity. So but, but, to claim it, to, I think to overclaim but it, he, it is But he is, silly. He, it is cleaner than, he is cleaner than clean. I wrote a definition, I've wrote, written my own definition of toxic culture, or one of them. One of my definitions of a toxic culture is this. Dismissing, belittling, or besmirching anyone who challenges the show or the office or the working scenario that they're in. And I think personally that bullying is actually suggesting that those who've lost out have a gripe and are bitter. I think that is bullying. I think that's the very... De I think what he's demonstrated there is the very DNA of a toxicity that was at work. I think, personally. I, 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 I would just like... What do you think? To, uh, you know what I'd like to say? I'd like to say this. <sighs> say it, baby. Say I'd it like to say about. this. Dr. Ranch, like oh, Dr. Yeah. Ranch Singh, who I don't know well, right? But obviously he spoken out, he made his statement, didn't he, last week? Yesterday. Uh, yesterday. I, I don't know him well, but a lot of people that I know that know him very well say that he is the sweetest, kindest, most decent of people. I've met him a number of times, just like in, in you know, in, in fact, uh, Friday when I was at um, Ado, he, he was there, like the Friday before. Sweet, kind, decent is what comes across. Warm. I said to you, didn't I, Mark? I said, oh, well, that doctor was at the, yeah. I think, is the kind of person you'd want as your doctor. Did, yeah. did I or did I not? You did, absolutely. And friends that I have that I really, really trust and are good people would not have a word said against him. He is a very, very decent person. And I... I really think that this statement is besmirching anyone that has said anything about the programme about him. I, I, I take umbrage with that because I, I don't like that kind of injustice because he is a good man. He's a good man, Roger. And basically, what for me, how I read that, how I read that statement, I could be wrong, how I interpret that statement my interpretation, is that he is pointing that, as well as all the other people, there are some very angry people that are just angry with everyone all the time and say terrible things, but for me, when he's only just made that statement, I felt that that was coming at the doctor, and he's a good guy. Well, it's come straight off the back of it. I mean, I, th yeah. I, I do think that to... I, th I think what's odd about saying someone has a grudge is to have a grudge is like you can be angry. It's an allowed emotion. So it, it kind of, what it does is it, it diminishes the possibility of anyone having an issue with you. It, yeah. se it seeks to remove the possibility of any, in fact, dare I say, and I'm, gonna, I'm on my own saying this, that the language Phil's using there is a little bit trolley because what he's saying there is he's, he's, he's weaponizing the ability to have any opinion that disagrees with himself. And in saying that, it means that anyone now who comes out, and obviously lots of people are coming out, and there are lots of people who are very supportive of him and all that kind of stuff. But it, it, it's, it's an opportunity to simply dismiss or potentially dismiss any form of criticism as merely a grudge. It's one of those words that belittles any emotion that someone's feeling and seeks to silence any difference and silence any criticism. And I would go back to this for me, personally, this is personally, is a definition of how a toxic environment develops. And if allowed to develop so much and you're at the top of the kind of chain, you can't even begin to identify, you can't, he couldn't even begin to unpick how he's contributed to a toxic environment. It, you know, I mean, the thing is, he said himself in that statement, he no longer works for this, so he can now say what, he's, what, what he wants. But is it, is it just here? Is, it, is his truth the only truth when he's admitted in a paper, in a national paper, that his truth cannot be trusted because he's yeah, lying to true, everyone he knows, including his family, who mm. I just keep going back to and thinking, you poor things, mm. what kind of hell are you in? 
And what I feel about this statement is, I feel that he's admitted to something in the most sanitised possible way that he can, right? And now he wants his legacy, which is this morning. Ooh. That's what it feels like to me. And he wants no marks on this morning because to mark this morning is to mark him. Yeah. And I think that he wants to settle in for a bit and then come back mm. in whatever guise and whatever channel. And so for me, and I can say this, can I not, Philip? Because you have now left, so you can say what you want. And so now you are just a civilian out there. <clears throat> I, I, think, I think it's a game. And I think it's a game where there are a lot of people's emotions involved here. Mm. And I, I, just, I just can't bear that kind of injustice. If you're like pointing your finger at the doctor, who is a very decent man, and making out that anything he would say, I mean, Philip, if he was now said, he could say to me, well, I'm not saying the doctor, but he made a statement on Friday and then you come out with this. I think it's Could it be, could it be that he did feel what he felt? Or, or is it just, or is it just that people hate you and have got a grudge against you? Well, I think one of the, I, I just think, <clears throat> there's, there's, there's something, I mean, look, you know, a lot of you have been, you know, there's a lot of chat and there's a lot of stuff going on. And I, I mean, one part of all of this, I think I might have mentioned this over the weekend, is... I personally, if Scott, he, should, he just shouldn't have said anything. I mean, and the timing of it, half an hour before this morning comes on, I feel so sorry for Dermot and Alison. I feel for so all sorry for all, everyone on this, there. Yeah, on this morning. And all the production and all the, just you're kicking up. Just, just yeah. go just, away. Just shush. Just, just shush. shush. I mean, that, that's it. It's not about you anymore. And it doesn't need to, be. well, it is about him. That's it's a joke, isn't it? Um, but the thing that really, really bemuses me about all of this, this can someone answer me this? <coughs> I really need help with this. Really need help with this. I'm gonna ask some of your friends about this as well because they're, they're good on this. Why does it feel like the press are doing a very odd thing with this story? And I don't know what you think, guys. On the one hand, they're wanting their cake. So they want the clickbait, the footfall, the story, the sensation, the controversy, etc., etc. But to me, it feels like there's just they're pulling their punch from the killer punch that they would, they would normally kind of deliver for most people. It feels, so for example, what I mean by mm. that is the initial letter of apology from Philip Schofield, the way the story broke, it wasn't an apology to his family. It wasn't an apology to, his, um, to, the, to the person that he had an, an involvement with. It wasn't an apology to his production team. It wasn't an apology to his bosses. It was an apology to the Daily Mail. Which is really Admittedly, weird. all those other things were in there, but the apology, by, by dint apology. of the fact that the apology to all of them came to the Daily Mail, that's really strange. And subsequently... Why, what do you think that means, then? I, do you really want to know what I think that means? I think that there is an, an entirely integrated, connective thinking and protection happening. I think they've, there's essentially, we're gonna do this story, but other people are being protected at the same time, and that's why they're protecting, ironically, part of Philip within all of this. I think this is much deeper, dirtier, dodgier than anyone would like to admit, and I think that the press need to be seen to be hanging them out to dry, but actually won't go much further. And I think a small example of that is if the person involved has said they weren't investigated or asked questions, why isn't that the story? So there you go. That's my feeling. You know, I just think, I think, you know, what Ed Balls was talking about on Good Morning Britain today was really interesting, which is, you know, we have to look at the industry-wide practice of the sort of stars in your eyes phenomenon, the way in which youngsters are brought in, the way in which sort of promises are made and, you know, people in authority can dangle this exciting career in front of them and all this kind of stuff. I just think that in the press, within the press, the printed media, there is some strange sort of holding back as well as appearing to step forward. Mm. 
It's really odd. It's really odd. It's like, I just, there's just that feeling in the coverage that you sort of think, whoa, hang on a minute. This is, this, 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 something stopping things from moving a little bit further. I don't know what that is. What do you think, guys? Well, I mean, we know that, you know, the press do all sorts of deals with people. I mean, you know, you tell us this and we won't say Elliot this. Elliot Gonzalez, totally. It feels like all these stories are still skirting around the real story. You've got a nose for this, Elliot. You've got a nose for this. There is a, there is the core of this story is being ignored. The press do do deals with people, don't they? I mean, yeah. they do. They'll say, you know, if you tell us this, we won't say this. That that goes on like big time. And and it is odd. I mean, it is odd when you say it that the first person that he apologised to was the male. <laughs> I mean, I but but I mean, this statement today does does blow my mind because it's like, don't don't don't, don't besmirch my show. Don't bes maybe you besmirched it. Mm. Do you think that maybe you besmirched it? Mm. But you know. Hey ho! But um, I do think, and anyway, but going back more generally, let's let you know. In terms of an industry, it's an industry. All industries have this. I, I hate this. Like when I go into, uh, uh, I'm in recovery for anyone who doesn't know. Whenever I go into an AA meeting, someone says, "Oh well, of course my industry, you know, drinking's prevalent." And then everyone goes, "Well, every bloody industry drinking, you know, every industry has the same thing. Every sort of sector has the same thing." Um, we've seen it with the, with Hollywood and and uh, you know what's his name Weinstein and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of nibbled at the edges of the music industry, though I don't think it's gone anywhere near where what the problem is there. Um, it's uh, there was another industry. What was it? A, a surgery, uh, the health operations, doctors, all that kind of stuff. You know, it happens in every industry. This hashtag Me Too type thing, and television is no different. I think television is an industry predicated and based upon, um, uh, you know, promising the world um, not just. And this isn't about people on screen. This is about people off screen behind the scenes. I've always talked, you know, when we used to recruit lots of youngsters, lots of young adults will be brought into companies, paid appalling fees, uh, handed a camera, with a tiny little camera and said, oh, you're a director, go out and direct this. And so, you know, this youngster will go home at the weekend, the family will say, what are you doing? Oh God, I'm directing an insert for such and such. And what this policy is, this is a managerial policy that happens across the industry and can happen to people who are also in editorial positions too, where, you know, the people in authority will wash their hands of responsibility uh, hand a camera to someone and say, go out and shoot this item, shoot this piece over here because you're a director. And of course, the poor person isn't actually experienced enough, doesn't know all of the kind of, you know, editorial peaks and troughs of what they need to navigate And there's so many around. industries that yeah. were happening. And it's I done mean, to lure them in. So, you know, this thing that, you know, allegedly has happened in terms of, you know, him being sort of starry-eyed and wanting to be an actor and a presenter and all this kind of stuff, it also happens behind the scenes too. And I think Ed Balls has just talked about this mm. today on Good Morning Britain. Do you know Britain. what? And I, I know I've said really this good. before, I love Ed Balls. He's been on Loose Women quite a number of times and actually I did a Loose Men with him. He is, he is a good guy. He's a really decent person. It's such a shame he was pushed out of politics because he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. And actually I think what he said... Today, was it today or yesterday? I think no, I think it was, it was really... this morning, actually. Oh, was uh, it this morning? He says, there are certain professions, politics is one, television the same, where very powerful people work with young people all the time in a very intensive mm. way, which means there should be an extra responsibility. Absolutely. And our society's changed even compared to when I was in politics. Now politics is dealing with scandals and the abuse of power in the workplace which were never even talked about before. I think that, that there it is. Please, Certain definitely. professions where very powerful people work with young people all the time in a very intensive way, which means there needs to be extra responsibility. I remember years ago, I was, uh, I was, I was in a movie and I made really good friends with this particular young actress. She was sort of, sort of the same age as me. And one of the older actors, a, a, a star, um, took a shine to her. And, oh my God, I just remember thinking, she was so sweet. She was so innocent about it. But she was also incredibly impressed and starry-eyed that he liked her. Mm. And I knew what was going to happen, mm. you know. And that person, that man, will have convinced himself that this beautiful young girl fancied him 
Right. Where, right. where she didn't. She yeah. was starry-eyed about the fact that he was a star. So it was his responsibility to put the wall there, not hers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You absolutely. know what I mean? Absolutely. And that is the way that it is. I've seen this as an actress happen all the time. Like, I, I, you know, and I've said it to actors in the past. Do you don't think she's really attracted to you, do you? That young girl. It, it's just because... It's the power. power. Now, people will say, oh, well, that's that person's fault. Well, not really, because young people are very impressionable. It's the older people's p responsibility to protect them from that. And I think the modelling world, I think, you know, that hasn't really been delved into yet. My God, some stories I've heard that goes on with models. And, and you know, there's still a lot to be done. And I think people, we... people mustn't get bored with the conversation. It mustn't be like, yeah. oh, well, why don't people just, you know, walk away? It's not that simple. It's so complicated. Mm -hmm. And um, we should never turn the light off on it, I think. You know, I mean, if I say, say one of our, and, and imagine this yourself, one of your um, children uh, meets somebody it, when they are a child at something, I don't know, a, a, a dance group or a gymnastics group, gymnastics as well, my God, you know, and then a few years later, they they give them a job and then they start an affair with them. How would you actually feel mm. about that? Mm. Because uh, that is what I always do. I always go to, how would I feel if that was my child it's not a criminal case yet dear heart that's not what we're talking about yeah you know what how would i actually feel and mm. i think that's what you know and i have said this you know to actors before how would you actually feel if that was your sister mm. or if that was your daughter and so we have to keep talking about it, so that just goes into people's brains yeah lisa you know? yeah yeah absolutely lisa child i think i think dr ranch speaking out means so much why would he say anything if the situation was not dreadful he's not an original tv person he works as a medical expert well i think that's what that's what i think is really unfortunate that's the word i'm going to use let's use let's use some management speak um it's unfortunate i think that philip's chosen to use the words that he has and post the thing that he's posted today actually because i think in a weird way it kind of feeds into the very thing that i think dr ranch was actually saying it's, it's unfortunate. But if he was, if Philip was and here now, he'd say, I never mentioned the doctor, you see, no, no, and no. I don't like that. It's yeah. just like... Yeah, it's disingenuous. It's, it's just disingenuous. It's veiled pointing finger at. Yeah. Obviously, there are a lot of other people that yeah. are very angry, that, that have been, you know, talking very loudly, you know, yeah. over the last few weeks and are very vicious. And I don't see the point of being vicious. Mm. I really don't. But, mm. you know, that, that very measured, very thoughtful statement of the doctors to i think the suggestion to be that it is just because they like him or because it's because he's got a grudge it, he's got a grudge because he's not on the show it, this is the fair, terrible thing about television fair. because that's almost a, that's almost a confirmation of the so-called power television of star modeling, status music, is that if you're not working on the show you film. must have a grudge if you've got a problem with the problem you must have a grudge oh for god's sake oh for god's sake um so yeah uh, so, Ed Ball, da, da, da. I just thought it'd be quite funny for us to have a very brief chat about co the most common mishaps of modern day life. This, this, this slip ups, things that you get caught out doing. I did it the other day. We were walking to the car, we were unlocking, we were taking the dogs, and I was getting intolerant with you, going, Why have you walked by? Where are you going? And there's me fumbling like a madman at the boot of a car that wasn't mine. That's a mishap. That sort of mishap. What's the most common? Shrinking sorry, clothes. Sorry, I was just reading people's comments. I didn't listen what? to a word you said. Oh, sorry. Just, I'll just because we've said quite a lot and quite a lot. Of yeah, no, I realised, and I just moved on to mishaps. Yeah, yeah. I do so apologise. Sorry, to sorry, I didn't. Just, sorry, I do apologise. Uh, Lisa Child, I think. Oh, no, no, we've done that. Uh, personally, think it will die down over summer, and they will come back with new presenters, all smiley, says maybe. Um, the young lad's mental health will be affected so much, says mm -hmm. Ashley. Absolutely. Stop and think. You know, but the weird thing is, is that if... Not, I haven't heard enough about how that person might be no, feeling, to be quite and, honest. No, and, and there are legal reasons why their name is not being mentioned in certain areas of the press. Um, but also, on a moral standing, that name should not be mentioned. Because that, that person doesn't want their name mentioned. So on mm. a moral, because we don't know what... what what actually categorically happened. And so out of respect to that person whose life is being turned upside down and rooted through, you know, I have 
huge sympathy and upset for that person. And, um, yeah, and people have got to stop digging around that person because if that person wants to say something, then that is that person's choice. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm being very careful here with this because, because, you know, as far as I'm concerned... If what we've been led to believe, but again, we have no facts yet, I believe that that person is a victim and should be given the, you know, the respect and the kindness. This is, must be unimaginable. It's unimaginable. You cannot. It's very easy to sit far away and go, oh, all the papers are after, but to actually be on the other end of this kind of attention, you know, so that's why we, you know, we don't say anything about this person or name or anything because that, let that person have the power to decide what happens next mm. for them. Mm. Nobody else mm. and nobody, you know, people shouldn't be posting stuff about that person or papers trying to get that person to talk or whatever. Just let, let him be, he's tried to go away, hasn't he? He's tried to just get on with his life and it hasn't been allowed to happen. And I I really, really feel for that person. And I think, ironically, by the same standard, I think Schofield, but if he hadn't posted something today, would have been also demonstrating some respect for his family. You know, there are all the other people involved in this. It's like, just step back from it now because it's, you know, there, there are, we said it yesterday, whenever we did the live before, you know, there are so many other people whose lives are involved in this it's in, in, you know, jobs and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of people that are really, really upset. You mm. know, the thing is, this idea that every person in television mm. is a hard-nosed, you know, tea-faced, mm. <laughs> lying mm. son of a bitch is just not true. Like mm. any other organisation, there's a real old smorgasbord, pick and nick, of types of people, just mm. like anything else. Mm. And the feeding frenzy is brutal and it is horrible to watch. Mm. Um, and I think Philip making statements fuels it further. Mm. And I think, and that's the person I'm, I'm most, I find most despicable is him. Mm. That's why. Shall I shall I move on to the rather sort of redundant mishap? <laughs> should, we, should we just sign off? Anyway, what are your most common mishaps, guys? Um, this is obviously a big story. It, it feels like it's going to rumble, but I personally don't necessarily think it will rumble. I, <laughs> I think I think, as I said earlier, I think it's going to be interesting to see how how this is tied up. I'm, I'm as fascinated by how this is going to be tied up with some kind of bow by the press. I'm I'm, I'm intrigued to see. The narrative of how the press covers it, rather next, than necessarily. Yeah. What are they going to yeah, do yeah, next? Yeah, because yeah. how up in their elbows are they? You know, the mail. Yeah. You know what? What's going to happen next from them? Because I feel like they keep they're holding stuff and giving us. Well, I don't even. Don't yeah. Think. I just, I just really, my, I'm not. You know, I'm not big on this kind of idea of interconnected conspiracy theories and all that kind of <laughs> stuff at all. I find it really annoying, but. Put it this way, I've often said it before, when there was there was a, some other incident, wasn't there? When people, you know when people say, oh, we did an investigation and there was no evidence of a cover-up. That's because a cover-up, let's, let's think about what the word cover-up means. A successful cover-up was a cover-up. <laughs> so, so what, I'm saying, no, so what I'm saying is, is, are the press, you know, what, what interconnectedness is going on here? What kind of trade-off, what sort of fast impact has gone on <clears> in the press? And as Philip said... He no longer works for ITV, so he can say what he's what. He's finally free. Mm. He's finally free. Mm. So therefore, we are free. Free to, to do what we think what, about Philip. <laughs> free to do what he wants to do. All right, guys, have a good How day. How does freedom feel? <laughs> yeah, uh, we were going to do mishaps, but clearly it's nah, there. 